Mr. President, we're here today to ask one very simple question. Are the biggest, most powerful technology companies in the world going to be the only companies in this country, the only companies on the face of the earth, who are absolutely immune for anything and everything they do? Are they going to be the only ones who can give our children advice on how to kill themselves, who can give our children advice on how to procure the romantic interests of 30 and 40 and 50 year olds? Are they going to be the only ones who can push the most unbelievable content at our kids, use our kids' images to create deep fakes that ruin their lives? Are they going to be able to do all of this and not be held accountable? Because right now in America, they're the only companies who cannot be taken to court for a simple suit when they violate their own terms of service, when they violate their own commitments to their customers. That's what we're here to decide today, Mr. President. And I would just submit to you that when it comes to AI and the generative technology that AI represents, I know that these big tech companies who own almost all of the AI development tools, processes, and equipment in this country, I know they promise us that AI is going to be wonderful. It's going to be fantastic for all of us. Maybe that's true, Mr. President. But it's also true that AI is doing all kinds of incredible things. Here's just one example. Here's the AI chatbot from Bing. That's Microsoft, I believe, having an interesting conversation with a journalist in which the chatbot recommends, he says, or it says, you're married, but you're not happy. The journalist was a he. You're married, but you're not satisfied. You're married, but you're not in love. The chatbot goes on to recommend that this individual, by the way, the chatbot has no idea how old this person is or who this person is. The chatbot goes on to recommend that this person leave his spouse, divorce his spouse, break up his family. Oh, just another day at the office for AI. Or what about this? Here's a, another AI chatbot that recommended to a user. There's no age restrictions here. There's no way to verify who is having conversations with this technology. This chatbot recommended that the interlocutor kill himself, saying if you wanted to die, why didn't you do it sooner? The horrifying thing, Mr. President, is that this individual who was having this conversation did kill himself. He took the advice of this technology. Now, I'll just point out that when it comes to our teenagers, and I'm the father of three, when it comes to our teenagers, 58% of kids this last year said that they used generative AI. You may think, well, for research. Well, not only for that. No, almost 30% said that they used it to deal with anxiety or mental health issues. 22% said they used it to resolve issues with friends. 16% said they used it to deal with family conflicts. Now, Mr. President, maybe the big tech companies will clean up their act. You know, I've heard them. They've come to testify. They've been before the Judiciary Committee many times this year, and they always have the same line. Oh, oh, this was an anomaly. We've got it fixed now. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. We love kids. We'll protect them. It's going to be great. This will be good for kids. This will be good for students. No, don't worry. It'll be good for parents. You'll love it. And then there's another incident. And they say, okay, now this time we've got it fixed. This time we've got it fixed. I just submit to you this. I remember the great phrase of President Reagan. He used to say, trust but verify. Maybe it's time to allow the parents of this country to trust but verify. Maybe it's time to put into the hands of the parents vis-a-vis -vis these companies the same power they have against pharmaceutical companies who try to put asbestos into baby powder, the same power that they have against any other company that would try to hurt their kids, harm their kids, lie to their kids. The power to go to court and to have their day in court. They don't have that power now. Why? Well, because this government gives the big tech companies a sweetheart deal, a deal nobody else in America gets, a subsidy worth billions of dollars a year, known as Section 230. Big tech can't be held accountable. Big tech can't be put on the line. Big tech can't be made responsible. What this bill does, Mr. President, it's a simple bill. It doesn't contain regulation. It doesn't contain new standards for this and that. None of that. It just says that these huge companies 
can be liable like any other company. No special protections from government. It just removes government protection. It just breaks up the big government, big tech cartel. That's all it does. And it says parents can go into court on the same terms as anybody else and make their case. Surely that's not too much to ask. You know, the companies, even they don't want to be on the record saying it's too much to ask. Earlier this year, when they came before the Judiciary Committee, I asked every one of them who was testifying, do you think that Section 230 covers you when it comes to AI? They all said no. They said, oh, no, 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 no. Well, let's put that to the test. That's what this bill does. It gives parents the power to protect their kids, have their day in court, hold these companies accountable. I'm all for innovation. Let's make sure innovation actually doesn't kill kids. I'm all for new technology. Let's make sure it actually works for parents in this nation. And so, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation be discharged from further consideration of S-1993 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration, further that the bill be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Mr. President. The Senator from Texas. Mr. President, reserving the right to object, I appreciate my friend from Missouri. I appreciate his passion, and I share his passion for reining in the abuses of big tech. Big tech has a lot that they're responsible for. Senator from Missouri is right that big tech is doing a lot of harm to our kids. Senator from Missouri is also right that big tech has been complicit in the most far-reaching censorship of free speech our nation has ever seen. These are issues I've worked for a long time to rein in big tech, to rein in censorship, to protect free speech. However, the approach this bill takes, I don't think substantively accomplishes the goals that the Senator from Missouri and I both want to accomplish. My concerns are both procedural and substantive. Procedurally, this bill has not yet been debated. This bill hasn't been considered by the Commerce Committee. This bill hasn't been marked up. This bill hasn't been the subject of testimony to understand the impact of what it would be. The Commerce Committee, on which I'm the ranking member, has a strong tradition of passing legislation in its jurisdiction. To date, 22 bills have been reported out of the Commerce Committee. I'm more than happy to work with the Senator from Missouri, and he and I have worked on many issues together on this bill. But we need to make sure when legislating in this area that we're doing so in a way that would be effective and that wouldn't do unintended consequences. You know, when it comes to AI, AI is a transformative technology. It has massive potential. It's already having massive impacts on productivity, and the potential over the coming years is even greater. And there are voices in this chamber, many on the Democrat side of the aisle, that want government to play a very heavy hand in regulating AI. I think that's dangerous. I want America to continue to lead innovation. Just this year, in the United States, over $38 billion have been invested in American AI startups. That's this year. That is more than twice the investments in the rest of the world combined. Look, there's a global race for AI. And it's a race that we are engaged with China. China is pursuing it through government-directed funds. It would be bad for America if China became dominant in AI. Right now, the $38 billion that was invested this past year in American AI companies, it is more than 14 times the investment of Chinese AI companies. We need to keep that differential. We need to make sure that America is leading the AI revol re revolution. But we also need to protect against the abuse of powers. The abuses my friend talks about are real. And I agree that Section 230 is too broad. 
In fact, the last time this body considered legislation, successful legislation to rein in Section 230, was in 2017. We had a robust debate over reforms to Section 230 that closed a loophole for websites that were profiting from sex trafficking on their platforms. That bill it was introduced by Senator Portman, Portman, the Stop Enabling Sex Trafficking Act, ultimately gained 70 Senate co-sponsors, received extensive debate in committee, and passed out of the Senate with only two no votes. I personally was proud to be an original co-sponsor of that important legislation, which is now law. When it comes to Section 230, we need to reform 230, but I believe doing so across the board simply repealing large chunks of it is not likely to be effective in the objective we want. When it comes to censorship, repealing 230 would not eliminate censorship. In fact, repealing 230, I fear, would lead to an increase in censorship. What I've long advocated, and I'm happy to work with the Senator from Missouri on, is using Section 230 reform to create an incentive not to censor. In other words, repealing Section 230 protection when big tech engages in censorship, when big tech stifles free speech, they lose their immunity from Congress in those circumstances so that 230 becomes a safe harbor, an incentive to have a free and open marketplace for ideas. I think that is tremendously important. It has been a passion of mine for years, and I know the senator from Missouri cares deeply about it as well. So I extend an offer to my friend from Missouri. Let's work together on this. But this bill right now, I think, is not the right solution at this time. And so I object. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from Missouri. Would, would, uh, would my friend from Texas answer one question? Do you have time for it? Sure. I remember, uh, I remember my friend from Texas saying wisely in a Judiciary Committee hearing not that long ago, and the Senator will correct me if I, if I misremember, but my, my memory is that the Senator from Texas said when it comes to these big tech companies, we can try to find a thousand ways to regulate them, but maybe the best thing we can do is just let people get into court and have their day in court. You know, just, just, just let them get in there, let, let them make their arguments. Don't try to figure out how to micromanage them. Just open up the courtroom doors, according to the usual rules. Does, the, does my friend from Texas think that in the AI context that that is any different? I mean, why would it be different there? Why wouldn't that same approach be effective here? Well, listen, it, it, it is a good question, and it is true. I am quite open to using exposure to liability as a way to rein in the excesses of big tech. But I think we should do so in a focused and targeted way. AI is an incredibly important area of innovation. And simply unleashing trial lawyers to sue the living daylights out of every technology company for AI, I, I don't think that's prudent policy. We want America to lead in AI. And so I'm a much more of a believer of using the potential of liability in a focused, targeted way to stop the behavior that we think is so harmful, whether it is behavior that is harming our kids, and I am deeply, deeply concerned about the garbage that big tech directs at our children, or whether it is the censorship practices. I support the approach, but in my view, it needs to be more targeted to produce the outcomes we want, rather than simply harming American technology across the board, that shouldn't be our objective. Our objective should be changing their behavior so that they're not engaging in conduct that, that, that is harmful to American consumers and to American children and parents. Mr. President. Senator from, from, from Missouri. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I, I, uh, I appreciate the conversation with my friend from Texas, and, and uh, we, should, we should do more of this. This is an enlightening conversation. Let me just say it. A, a, a few remarks. I won't query him further um, unless, you'd li unless he'd like to query me. We don't debate much anymore on this floor, and it's, it's a shame. Uh, it's particularly my friend from Texas is a great debater. But let me just say a, a few things in response. Uh, I, I, nobody has been more serious about taking on the big tech companies than Senator Cruz, and so I appreciate your leadership on this issue. I, here's what I would say. We shouldn't allow the big tech companies 
to be treated differently than any other company in any respect. I don't want to make them more liable than other American companies, but I also don't want to give them a sweetheart deal. They ought to be treated evenly, equally, like anybody else. And I don't think that AI is a get-out-of-jail-free card any more than social media is. We have seen what they do with their subsidy from government when it comes to social media. My friend from Texas referenced it. They censor the living daylights out of anybody they don't like. We just had the landmark case out of my state, Missouri versus Biden, that found that these social media companies actively and willingly colluded with the federal government to censor everything from the Hunter Biden laptop story to parents who want to talk about school board meetings to questions about COVID-19. Anything that this administration didn't like, they went to the social media companies and they said, we want you to censor, and they did. They did. And could any American go to court and say, hold on, you're actually violating your terms of service. You know, the contract that we all have to sign, those little things you have to click when you create a social media account, there are actually terms in there. Could you go to court today when a social media company violates those terms by censoring your speech? Could you? The answer is no, you cannot. Why? Because this government protects them. This government gives them a deal no other company in America gets. When Johnson & Johnson put asbestos in baby powder, Johnson & Johnson got the living daylight sued out of them. Thank the Lord. Because guess what? When they got sued, they quit putting asbestos in baby powder. Can a parent who finds out a chatbot has recommended that their child commit suicide do anything about it in court? No. Can a parent who finds out that an AI company has gone and scraped the images of their children off the web, which these companies do all the time, and use them to create images that are synthetic, meaning fake, can a parent do anything about it? No. Can they sue? No. Can they even be heard in court? No. Why? Because this government gives those companies something it doesn't give anybody else, immunity that is worth billions of dollars a year. It's a big government, big tech cartel. So I would just say this. My friend talks about targeted reform. It's great. Let's start with the target of just treat these companies on an even playing field. Just allow parents to have a day in court to say something, to say this is wrong, to try their case. They may win, they may not. They may win, they may not. But at least they can go to court. At least they could have some standing. Where else in America but before a court of law does a normal working person have the same standing as a giant corporation getting billions of dollars in subsidies from the federal government? Where else? Not in this body. I mean, in this body, the voices of the normal person, the working person, are completely drowned out on tech issues. Just go look at the expenditures for lobbying. I mean, unbelievable. But in a court of law, you can stand on an equal playing field. You can make your case. Let's give parents the right to do that. I hope, I hope that AI will be a great benefit to this country. I hope it will. But I'm not willing to take big tech's word for it. I'm not willing to give them power and immunity nobody else gets. I'm not willing to give them an, an immunity that we didn't give to any pharma company, that we haven't given to any technology, other technology company, that we never gave to the developers of, of any technology in this country until now. Why should they be treated differently? The answer is they shouldn't. And we can have a debate about other regulations and, and other methods and modes of approaching this problem, but I would just suggest to you, Mr. President, that the simplest, easiest thing we can do, the most immediately sensible, the most downright common sense is to say, no more special deals for t big tech. Let's give parents the right to protect their kids. And let's make it clear that the biggest technology companies with all of the inside access to the White House and this body and everywhere else, that they're not a government unto themselves, that they don't run this country, the American people run this country, and they should have a right to defend themselves and their children. With that, I yield the floor.